Hello, as we are discussing properties of uh, polymeric systems, uh, the focus of uh, this lecture uh, will be on uh, mechanical properties. Uh, we have already looked at uh, the stress strain curves and uh, preliminary quantities which are defined based on such stress strain curves. Uh, in this lecture, uh, let us look at uh, the elastic behavior uh, which is at small deformation for all materials, but we have also seen that for rubber like uh, materials, uh, elastic deformation can be present for very large deformations. So, we will look at uh, both of these from the point of view of uh, properties of uh, polymeric materials and uh, this will be done by first uh, quickly summarizing different modes of uh, mechanical characterization that we can do. And then uh, we will look at uh, small deformation elastic behavior or large deformation elastic behavior. You can notice here the word linear and nonlinear. And so, small deformation behavior in uh, most materials is where uh, linear elastic behavior is observed, while materials which generally show elasticity under large deformation such as 100 percent, 500 percent, in that case it is uh, the relationship between stress and strain uh, is nonlinear. So, let us uh, quickly uh, recap the different modes uh, or properties which are possible to be described. Uh, in the lecture on stress strain curves, we looked at uh, extensional behavior or uniaxial tension behavior. However, we can also have uh, uh, flexural or compressive or shear deformation. And so, the same stress strain curves that we talked about could also be generated in any of these different modes. And uh, the challenge in uh, mechanics of materials is that uh, sometimes it is not easy to correlate the behavior of tension and flexure, uh, flexure mode or flexure and compression mode because of the underlying mechanisms and interactions which are present in the material. With the same stress strain curves that we had looked earlier, we could also define uh, in addition to the modulus which was defined, we could also define uh, modulus which is a uh, tangent modulus or a secant modulus. Uh, I suggest you just go and look up uh, these definitions. These are very standard definitions, especially when uh, linear uh, region is very small, then these are very useful quantitative measures for engineering decision making. We can also look at uh, strain at failure or elongation at break to quantify the nature of mechanical response of the material. Uh, since in this lecture, we will also discuss very large deformation, one useful quantity in addition to strain is called the stretch ratio. In this case, uh, we look at the ratio of uh, the deformed length versus undeformed length. And the stretch ratio in case of rubber band for example, can be 3 or 4 or even 5. So, we can stretch the rubber band to 5 or 6 times its original length. And so, rather than saying 600 percent strain, we say 6 as the stretch ratio. And so, uh, let us uh, start with the elasticity and uh, defining it. So, elastic uh, materials are uh, those materials where stress at any given instant of time is related to the strain at that instant of time. So, this implies that whatever was the history in terms of the deformation or no deformation is irrelevant. If I know the stress in the material, I immediately know the strain in the material. If I specify the strain in the material, I immediately know the stress in the material. It does not matter how fast the stress is being applied, it does not matter how fast the strain is being applied, it does not matter whether the material was undeformed earlier or deformed earlier, it does not matter that I apply 10 percent strain and come back to 5 percent strain, the stress will be dependent on 5 percent current strain if the material is subjected to 5 percent strain currently. And so, this is uh, the definition of elasticity. Uh, and for linear elasticity, this can be represented uh, where there is a linear relationship between stress and strain. And this all of you are familiar with in terms of Hooke's law. And uh, if you look at uh, macromolecular systems and how this Young's modulus uh, or the Hookean modulus depends on uh, the nature of macromolecules, uh, in amorphous and uh, crystalline uh, materials, it is the secondary interactions uh, which uh, lead to the uh, material being deformed or the chains themselves uh, also cannot be deformed because of the covalent bonds. And so, secondary interactions uh, are the ones which can allow some amount of displacement of uh, molecules. 
And similarly, in case of a crystal, a uh, crystal which is a well ordered system can uh, get uh, stretched. So, if I just depict it using a two dimensional and if there is a force like this being applied, then uh, because of the force. the crystal can get stretched in this direction and it can uh, without changing the order of the atoms and molecules. So, therefore, in these cases what happens is there is an energy associated with interaction of uh, atoms and molecules and when we apply deformation we have to basically work against this energy. So, uh, therefore, material in such cases behaves like an energy spring. So, as soon as we release it comes back. So, that is why it is an energetic spring and uh, the uh, minimum energy configuration is uh, always reached. So, therefore, sample will always come back from the deformed state to undeformed state in exactly identical way. And that is why the current state of strain is only important. Whatever is the deformation that is applied in the material gets stored in the material as strain energy. When we release it, the strain energy is released back, material comes back to original state. And uh, just to uh, highlight uh, the application of Hooke's law uh, is quite common for engineering materials. So, you can look at this uh, question where there is a cross sectional area is given and uh, the uh, modulus of the material is given and based on Hooke's law you can actually then find out what is the strain that is being applied on the material. Now, when we go to large deformations and uh, material is still elastic. Uh, I hope you remember from our discussions of stress strain curves in the lecture 32 that many materials will deform plastically and in that case at large deformations elasticity will not be observed. And so, in case of rubber like materials where this is most relevant, uh, what we have is uh, again state of stress is dependent only on the instantaneous strain in the material or the instantaneous value of strain depends on the instantaneous value of stress. And the discussion that I had about you know strain rates being irrelevant all of that is equally applicable here except for the fact that now deformations can be very large. And because of these large deformations the strain that we use to quantify deformation in Hooke's law kind of uh, applications is no longer valid. And uh, we define uh, uh, what are called uh, either finger strain tensor or green strain tensor. And uh, the statement of nonlinear elasticity is that the stress is dependent on the value of strain. And uh, because of the large deformation, the strain measures uh, uh, have multiple possibilities in terms of which strain measure can be used. So, depending on historical uh, uh, applications or depending on the scientists who have developed and engineers who have worked on these concepts, there are various options present to describe the stress strain behavior of these nonlinear materials. And uh, in this case, uh, the uh, idea for uh, rubber like materials is that uh, there are uh, negligible secondary interactions. The macromolecules are not interacting with each other, the only bonded interactions which lead to the stretching and flexibility of macromolecule are re relevant. However, a coarse grain picture of in terms of ideal chain or an expanded chain is sufficient for us to look at the elasticity of the macromolecular system. And because we are looking at uh, temperatures where segmental mobility is feasible uh, because of the rubbery state, this is crucial in terms of macromolecular stretching. And so, when deformed uh, segment of uh, the crosslink polymer network uh, gets stretched and this is possible because of the segmental mobility. And uh, this is again uh, has been uh, highlighted few times, but maybe I will just repeat it once more. So, if uh, let us say this is the polymer chain which is dangling between two crosslink points and uh, if uh, this is being stretched, uh, what happens is uh, if you stretch it, then uh, the chain has much less freedom. And the, the number of ways in this conformation can change for a stretch chain is very less compared to an undeformed chain. And so, therefore, uh, different conformations uh, become uh, less and less if you do stretching and therefore, the entropy of uh, crosslink network decreases. And as soon as you release the extension, the material comes back because of maximization of entropy. So, therefore, uh, rubber behaves like an entropic spring. Uh, the internal energy change is uh, neglected in case of deformation of rubber.
because of negligible secondary interactions. And so, material returns to maximum entropy configuration. And so, uh, just to uh, talk about uh, the uh, rubber stretching, given that very large deformations are possible and uh, also we know that rubbers are incompressible. So, quite often uh, there will be questions related to how does a rubber deform and how do its dimensions change. So, for example, if uh, we have a, a rubber with L0 length and it is stretched to L, what happens is even its width and uh, breadth also change. But because it is incompressible, the volume uh, will remain the same whether it is deformed or undeformed and therefore, uh, the volumes can be related to each other and the stretch ratios which are defined as the ratios of lengths can also be related to each other. And if we assume that it is stretching in uh, x direction in this case and the y and z direction the response is equivalent, then the reduction in y and z will be similar while x axis the elongation is there. And so, uh, you can just read about uh, in the Poisson's ratio for polymeric materials uh, for rubber uh, Poisson's ratio is 0 0.5, but for many uh, polymeric material uh, the ratio is 0 0.3 to 0.5. So, it is on the side of uh, incompressibility in case of polymeric materials. Now, we will close this lecture by just quickly looking at uh, two different models for describing uh, the uh, nonlinear elasticity. Uh, you can uh, as a first exercise to get familiar with these equations, you can ask the question what happens if the deformation is small. So, if deformation is small then uh, lambda uh, which is the stretch ratio uh, will be uh, basically 1 plus epsilon and epsilon is a very small quantity. So, you can substitute uh, 1 plus epsilon for uh, lambda in these equations and try to simplify and convince yourself that both of these will reduce to Hooke's law. So, these are equations which are valid for arbitrarily large deformations because they are describing the rubber behavior, but if you look at exceedingly small deformation at very small deformation again Hooke's law will be valid. And uh, so, these are two different models, Mooney Rivlin uh, is a phenomenological model uh, which is arrived uh, by specifying a specific strain energy and it has two constants uh, which are empirical and uh, we will uh, solve problems related to both of these models to give us an idea how linear and nonlinear elasticity is very different. Uh, where some of the macromolecular picture and a single macromolecule that we discussed during second week is important is in terms of the ideal chain model directly giving us a neo hookian model. So, in this case there is one coefficient c 1 and uh, you can see the similarity between neo hookian and Mooney Rivlin model. So, when we look at practical applications of rubber, neo hookian works for a much smaller class of materials while Mooney Rivlin is applicable for a larger class of materials. But both of these again have been modified to a significant extent to look at variety of rubbers which are present. So, these are the simplistic models which are present. Uh, as a uh, uh, in terms of stress, because the cross sectional area keeps on changing, we can define engineering stress or the true stress and the uh, properties change uh, just little bit based on what the uh, definitions are. So, in terms of uh, the uh, question related to Hooke's law, uh, the answers are uh, straightforward in terms of the uh, ratio of stress to the modulus. So, with this we will close this discussion on uh, mechanical properties of uh, uh, elastic like response of polymers. Uh, what remains is uh, to look at uh, plastic deformation uh, in many of these polymers and uh, there are also advanced uh, mechanical uh, responses in terms of what happens when it is extremely high deformation rate which is called impact or what happens when material is failing, why and how the cracks propagate in the material. So, some of that we will quickly recap in one of the future lectures and aside from all of this viscoelasticity of polymers is also a broad mechanical uh, property which we will discuss later on in the course. Thank you.